Hi, I'm Erica Schroeder, but you may know me from Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, X-Men, Sonic, and I never listen to the GNT show. GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Friends with benefits. <laughs> Speaking of having a good time, Terry. Mm-hmm. Dayton broke the G and T show. This is now the David Mac <laughs> appreciation <laughs> hour. You asshole. <laughs> what is it about this guy that people love him so much with his purple velvet cape and his crown? I thought it was a little much when he had us carry him in the studio on a throne. I am awesome. <laughs> Look what I have brought upon the world! There is an urge to go yin 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 yin. I heard rumors that you might be working on something else, but we won't pry much. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna pry a little. <laughs> dare you! How dare you ask me to change it? Do you not understand the majesty of my genius? <laughs> and the guy sitting next to me looked at me like he was, you know, like I'd crapped in his hat. Yeah, it's the professionalism yeah. that sells the show. That's right. Joe Lantru, ladies and gentlemen, this is Gettysburg 7, Nick, coming to you from the Great Allentown Comic Con, where I'm interviewing the very lovely Erica Schroeder. Hi. Now, people may be saying, wait a minute, I know that name from somewhere. Why don't you go ahead and run down your list of what they might know you from? Okay, a couple of roles that seem to be fan favorites are um, Blaze from Sonic 06, um, Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece. Nurse Joy from Pokemon, as well as Bianca, and a slew of Pokemon. <laughs> um, also, from the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, um, from the various versions of it, I was uh, My Valentine and Dark Magician Girl, and also um, a fan favorite, Akiza Ezinski. Um So those are just a couple of ones that, that people seem to care to care for. Oh, and there's also um, another fan favorite, a favorite of mine, is Emma Frost. From Astonishing X Men, um, John Sweden about motion comics. And you know that uh, Emma Frost would be my favorite if you follow our <laughs> show. So, how did you get into the to the, the the acting business and then the voiceover business? Sure, no problem. Um, I started out well as you know, a typical kid that came out of the womb dancing and singing, and <laughs> my parents were like, "What are we gonna do with her?" Um, <laughs> I kind of knew from the time I came under the earth that I wanted to be a performer and an actor, and um, I also knew that I always wanted to do cartoons and stuff like that. I used to impersonate a lot of um, different voices, a lot of male voices, actually. Really? Um, yeah. Um, a lot of comedians, male comedians. Ooh. Bob Cat Goldsway. <laughs> I love him, and he ended up directing me in an episode of Chappelle's show. Oh, wow. Years later, and I was like, he was kind of handsome, and he kind of looked like Bono. And I was like, I just did not even for a moment think that it was him. And in the middle of being directed, and someone says, like, oh, yeah, that's Bobcat Goldthwait. I was like, what? Him? And then uh, I was in a bridesmaid's dress for the episode. It was at episode three. Um, it's a wonderful chest with the sketch. <laughs> oh, it was funny. But anyhow, um, yeah, so we... we I was gonna. I was about to do my impersonation of him for him in a bridesmaid's dress, and then I got called back to set. We both got called back to set, and it was very unfortunate because I think he was actually looking forward to it. Can you give it to him? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can do it now. I can try. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> I want to love the little fat boy. All the little fat boys make fun of his dress. Is that little fat boy you? Oh, oh my God! I grab on my face. I don't know if that was a great, but... Oh, my God. If anybody remembers, though, like, the <laughs> 80s and the 90s, and oh, my God. That's all. No, I don't know if that was as good as I can do it, but... Anyhow, yes, I love um, strange character actors. I always have. Love Paul Lumen. Oh, God. Um, TV Herman. How excited are you? There's a new TV movie. Very, 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 very excited. Would you agree with me that his being arrested was total bullshit? I think... What are you supposed to do in that theater? 
It's I mean, not like it was a family. He thing. obviously was set up. I mean, yeah. you know, or someone spotted him. It was kind of a cruel thing to do to somebody. I mean, no, I guess you shouldn't really be doing that in public. But at the same time, he wasn't in adult theater. There were yeah. children around. Um, I, I felt bad for him, but also, like, you know, I mean, that was a little stupid. Right. <laughs> well, you know, two of my favorite Paul Rubin's roles, and Pee Wee stands on its own. Right, right. He was the first guy that played on Everybody Love Raymond played Amy's brother, the comic book I star, remember. And he killed that. Yes, he did. He was absolutely hysterical. That and the vampire in the film, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which may have been the I single greatest death yeah. Yeah. ever. Well, now I gotta watch it. It, it. it goes on for like minutes and minutes and he vamps it the entire way. And it, it, It's Joss, you know. Yeah. But it, it's, oh my God, but the, him playing uh, Peter, the brother, mm-hmm. the comic book store owner, I don't know why he didn't, why they didn't call it. Chris Elliott did a great job mm-hmm. after, but Paul Rubens just had a, like a dangerous energy. Chris Elliott is Chris Elliott. Uh-huh. Paul Rubens has a dangerous energy to it. Yeah. I think. I think so too. I mean, obviously, a, like, just a strange entity or just strange essence, but. Did you ever see the, the, the game show network used to play the gong show when he was on the gong show? No. YouTube Paul Rubens yeah. gong show. They won. Oh my god. Yeah, I love him. I think he's great. I'm very excited to see the movie. I was like definitely one of the first few people. Also, I think they're doing a version of this is kind of, well, not related, but also related in terms of like sequels that are coming back like years later. Um, David Bowie in The Labyrinth. I heard they're going to be doing a sequel of The Labyrinth. Is that Shut true? Shut your nose. I saw something on the Facebook about it and I freaked out, but I then I look. didn't read it because I just didn't have time. I was like running out the door with my kids or something. But I'm such a Bowie fan. Well, I'm like, I, I'm ashamed to say that I'm not familiar with his complete body of work, but I'm completely familiar with that movie because it was like one of my favorites that growing up as a kid and now it's my daughter's favorite. That's so and cute. she was um, the Goblin King for Halloween and she rocked it. I put it on my fan page. Erica Schroeder, actor director, and she looks amazing. I have to say, I don't usually post pictures of my kids on the on the um, on, you know public page, yeah, but I had to, and everybody flipped out over it because she looks so good. She looks so good, but um, she likes to impersonate him singing and stuff. So I don't know. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll. I've been listening to a lot of '70s Bowie lately. Yeah, it's like the Diamond Dogs and, and Young Americans time frame, and it just still holds up so well. I love the one that he did with um, Annie Lennox. Yes. Uh, the the under pressure yeah 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 for, yeah. for the con- this year at the, at the Vegas convention for mm-hmm. Star Trek my friend and I were doing that she's going to be the Annie Lennox and I'm doing the David Book oh, I can't that's sing perfect I can't sing oh I'll tell you about the episode oh, no. oh yeah oh good <laughs> but um so how did you get, were you doing you I okay know you so said yes I did a long and, diversion there but yes so I went to school for acting at NYU for um great school. It was great. I, I had a great time. A little bit of debt afterwards, but I did get an acting scholarship, which I was very grateful for. Um, so that helped. But um, I studied at the music theater studio, Cap 21, and then I, we had an option. You can you can go to and study somewhere else after you've done your, your primary studio. So I ended up going to the classical studio and studying Shakespeare because that was kind of like a big love of mine in high school. I actually won like date finals championship for the um, the English as a um, I was going to say English as a second, second language. language because I do ESL. Well, with Shakespeare, it is kind of a second language. It wasn't, it wasn't ESL. I'm sure the, the English Speaking Union. Oh. Yes. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> um, the ESU had a national competition for school. And so I did, I won for my school, then I won for the region, and then I won for the state, and then I went to the finals in New York City. Um, the Shakespeare recitation competition is what it's called. I had to do a monologue and I had to do a, um, a sonnet. So I was, and we'd done a lot of Shakespeare plays in high school, and I was like a total Shakespeare nerd. Fanatic. What's your favorite Shakespeare part? Oh, my favorite part. Well, I played, um, interestingly enough, I played, I did Twelfth Night twice. Once in high school and once, once in college. I had to play Olivia first, and then I played Viola. And I have to say that I'm definitely more of an Olivia. I mean, it was really hard to play Viola. It was, I don't know. It was just not... It was more neutral it for didn't me. Connect with you? I didn't connect with it as much. With How about your, what's your favorite Shakespeare line of all of them? That, oh is there one God. that you just like when you? Well, all the worlds of stage and all the men and women nearly players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in nine plays many parts. To me, 
is an incredible thing because then there's the whole speech that comes along with that, um, how they start out, the infant starts out mewling and puking in the, in the nurse's arms, and then it goes through the seven stages of man, and they end up at the end, um, back to the first stage. Like, you, yeah. you start out as an infant, and you go and you leave as an infant if you spend that much time on the earth. And to me, I just, oh, there's just so much gold in there. It's just and what's upsetting to me, and maybe saying this here on your podcast and getting out into the universe, is that once you get known as a certain thing, like I started out as a musical theater performer. Um, my agents saw me on Broadway. That's how they saw me in musicals. And I saw myself there, too. But I also saw myself in plays, in Christopher Durang plays. I saw myself in Shakespeare plays. I saw myself in uh, Charles Bush plays, um, really far out com- original comedies, as well as Shakespeare and I rarely got a, even an audition. For, I mean, it's like I couldn't even get my foot in the door. And I'm like, yeah. why? Why is there this like stigma that if you're a musical theater performer, that means you can't do Shakespeare or vice versa? Which I find I found kind of frustrating. I mean, it wasn't like a hard fast. Move, I mean, they say they want somebody like really well rounded, but yeah, yeah. you try and. It was really hard to get my foot in the door. It was really hard to be taken seriously as a as a um, theater actor as well. Then I had a couple of like people who would see me, and and you know usually I would get cast. You know I got this brand new play. Uh, well, it's not brand new anymore, but it's called Hiding Behind Comets that I did at Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park, um, which was about Jim Jones. I mean, it was dark. Wow. It was a dark, 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 dark comedy. Were you one of the followers? Comedy. No, actually, it was interesting. I was the um. There were four characters. It was a four-character play, and I was like the character that kind of introduced all of the plot lines. But not the main character. So um, I was uh, kind of like someone who helped move the plot along and helped introduce plot lines. Right. But um, uh, anywho, it was just an interesting play. It was a new play. I got the original role. It was a world premiere. And I was very excited because for a long period of time, I felt like I was just trying to pound against the doors to try and get the doors to open and try and, try and accomplish those things. Having, do you find that like people... Um, that they may get now. There's some exceptions, but that like get cast on soap, get stuck in soap operas for their career because people only see them. Yeah, as doing I that think they and can, and also they can they can get caught in a style. Now that doesn't mean that they're caught in a style. It means that someone thinks they're caught in that style. Right. Um, just as someone might think like, oh, America does primarily anime voices, so it means she doesn't can't do Emma Frost or can't do other things, which is like totally absurd. It's, you got to give every Everybody a shot. You got to give everybody a chance to to show them their versatility. The reason why I do a lot of voices and video games and stuff is I'm, I'm usually the person doing the additional voices. If you won't see my name in the credits as doing like a lot of parts, which I do, but they hire me because in a two or three hour period of time I can come in and do like you know 12 or 13 different characters, and you won't recognize them. You know you might. Oftentimes people think they know you really really well, but too they know your voice. They know characters are close to you, but they don't know characters that transform yeah. into other things. What are some of the video games that we may know you from? Uh, the Gangstar Vegas. I played a lot of little prostitutes and whores in that. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> the guy was like, I swear we auditioned you for other parts. You just nailed every single one. Um, you know, a lot of the radio ads and stuff like that. Um, that were really fun little little parts. Um, Dungeon Hunter 4, I did a lot of the creatures on that, a lot of the little, um, oh gosh, there was my, my Little Pony one I did, I think. Oh, maybe I'm making that up. Maybe oh, I just went up. oh, maybe I didn't. Hold on. Anyhow, I'm like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm digressing. But, <laughs> um, also the Blade, uh, that's the Sonic stuff, and then us, uh, two favorite roles I had in video games that I'm not sure if they were popular games or not, but I played Hildegard Valentine and O'Connigan, which is like a Native American character. In um, Shadow Hearts or a new, from a New World, oh, okay. or Shadow Hearts Three, otherwise known as, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I did this other really cool, like noir kind of video game called Insecticide. Heard of that. Yeah, where I played this character named Madame Quincy, and she was like, um, oh, it was just awful, <laughs> darling. You know, she was just this sort of. 
evil, like, you know, and they had these great scenes that we got to do before we even got into the video game. That's the kind of games that I like to do because you can, like, play around with the character and right. like that. So I'm bad at sometimes, sometimes the fans are better at telling me what I do. Like, a lot of us just, like, kind of, once the role is over, we sort of, we can sort of forget it for a while until it comes back to us. Right, because it would be quite some time before the game hits the market, right? Yes, a lot of time. Sometimes I don't even know. Like, sometimes it's a fan will post, like, by the way, you know, you were in this game and it came out. And I'd be like, oh, cool, you know, but I don't play. I'm not a gamer because um, I'm, I'm making me nervous. <laughs> I get, like, I get, like, I don't like dying, like, repeatedly. I probably, you know, I just like to die once. Once really, I mean, so we all. So, but my my husband likes to play stuff. Um, he doesn't get a lot of time to, but my son has already started, um, which is a little scary. But um, and how old is your son? Five. Oh God. My 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 um husband's now doing the Lego Star Wars, which are so cute. Fun. The Lego games, Aren't Lego they? Batman, Lego Indiana Jones, all of them are so I just much fun. I think they're adorable. Actually, he was um, I I had to sign a non disclosure agreement in NDA, but he's my son is going to be. In an animated feature with me, free leg. Yeah, we just did the fixes. So it's, we did the first one like seven months ago, and then about a month ago we did the fixes, and then in about a year it'll come out. And, um, That's awesome. I think I, I think I can say I think it's okay for me to say that I'm going to play his mother. Yeah, so it's really special. Now I've got to ask you to so make sure we get you back. And you don't have to be a There's a lot of sex symbols in the X-Men universe, but Emma Frost kind of has a place of her own. Oh, yeah, it dude, was fun. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. I mean, it's like, like, iconic character. Just like, I don't, I, did you I'm see pretty sure I did not have to. Her? I did not, but what's funny is um, I hung out with her ex-boyfriend, um, Josh Brogan. I saw his first concert, like, at a tour near um, where my husband and I were living at the time, because one of my friends was really good friends with him. And it's kind of a funny story. He is actually part of the story of how we told my mother-in-law that I was, that I was pregnant. Because I know, completely random story. So we're taking pictures of my husband and I with Josh after the show because he wanted to hear feedback from us, like how the concert went, like the first one preview. I don't know what you call it. In the theater, you call it a preview. What do you call it? Um, Before the painful price, like they're sort of trying out. Yeah, uh, like a warm-up show. Yeah, it was like a warm-up show and he wanted some feedback and stuff. And we took pictures uh, with him and then we took pictures of his dog and stuff. And somewhere around that time, I had found out I was pregnant and so we took like a slideshow to my in-laws yeah. house and um, yeah, my, my husband's like this is Josh Jovin this is Josh and Erica this is Josh's dog this is your grandkid and like showed a picture of this of this program. and so we told him like you're going to be part of the story or whatever but anyhow no that was such a huge um, uh, diversion from what I would say but I did not see January Jovin now Eric uh, how did you feel about her Playing that, I really like it. I really liked it. Yeah, I just, um, it. She had a real. Um, <laughs> edge to her, um, yeah. which I enjoyed. Now, a character as complex as Emma Frost, mm-hmm. because she's been all over the place in the Marvel universe, good, bad, you know, everything. How did you approach it? What, what? Um, well, they were really wanting. Um, they really wanted her, first of all, to be. <laughs> he not really know where she was coming from. They wanted a little bit of, you know, obviously the sex appeal in there. They also wanted the education. And the and that she has a slight education. You know, she's got, like, I didn't Americanize her too much. Um, which I think really, really helped with the character. It helped me find her and helped me um, work the voice, definitely to have that going, you know, to have that, them asking for that. And um, I had an amazing time. I was actually, like, um, nine months pregnant. Like, I was just, like, any day now I'm going to give birth to my son. But I recorded it, so they were joking around about, like, 
we wanted to do a gag reel. They wanted me to be a part of the video. They ended up using I think, I'm not sure, but um, they wanted me to do it. And uh, they were joking around saying you, you should come in dressed like Emma, like like I'm pregnant. Which we like were playing around with the idea, but I was like, no, I would never do that. But I ended up, I think, giving birth on the day that I was supposed to do the interview or something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, it was crazy. But um, now can you can you give us a little Emma sauce? Yeah. Um, oh, give me a line. I'm like, give me a line. Give me something to say. Um, yeah. the comedic roles are easier to improvise. Right. I mean, can you tell that we're in the green room, people? Yeah. We're Nicholas Nichols is sitting next to us with her entourage. She's having a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I had lunch with her earlier. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Okay. It was great. She wants to get back in the theater, so we were like conversing because I know a lot of producers and stuff and shows that are going on. So. Yeah. Um, is there anything you remember Emma Frost saying? I know it's just. Oh, 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 let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I think I might. And while she's thinking, um, I have to tell you, she's got a photo of her dressed as Emma Frost. Yeah. <laughs> that was Mark McKenna's fault because he drew, he drew her for um for Marvel. Like I don't know if he drew her for Marvel, but he has um, drawn her before. So that was his whole mastermind. He was like, this must happen. I'm trying to think of like one of the first lines in the first episode when um oh how about this when um so gushingly glad you could join us. I know you can barely hear. I'm just saying the line. So gushingly glad you could join us. And because <laughs> I can barely hear my shouting into the microphone. Well, yeah, and we have to get Erica back to her table. Um, Awesome interview. Oh, I'm so glad. Mad props. I love your skills. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad you took the time to join us. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up because she is actually here, you know, doing business. Can you tell us where we can find you on the interwebs? Yes, you can find me on my fan page, um, Erica Schroeder, actor director. I opened it up about like two and a half years ago when I was getting a slew of a friend request from people with anime pictures, and I felt just terrible ignoring everybody because I have a personal life and a family life. And I said, so years ago, I took the time to write to every single one of them. And I said, hey, you know, I can't friend you on here because it's a private thing for me. But I would love to get to know you on my fan page. And um, and that's how it started. And, and uh, I had, like, this most awesome, sweet, kind, loving, supportive fan group. I think these people are falling in love on there. I don't really know. Um, it's adorable to watch. Yeah. It's a it's a place for people of like and yeah. yeah, and I support everyone and I don't allow anyone to get bullied or any type of you know and so far everyone's behaved wonderfully That's on there. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll put the link on our on our website. Yeah, and as far as like being hired or whatever you can someone's looking to hire me, you can call my manager, Steinberg Talent. In out of camera. <laughs> and we'll put that on. Yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up now. We we hope you've enjoyed this supplemental log with Erica Schroeder and uh, Joel Antro bitches. Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp Eleven, Grethor, Five Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation. GNT show is a busy little beaver production. Some dude walks out. Proceeds to explain what it's all about I sure want to leave I think you'd agree But we cannot leave Till we find out what it's all about Just an amusement park Bones is now alive so it's okay for him to say I'm a doctor not a shish kebab Apparently it's okay if we trust an unknown race You can read any one of our thoughts So be careful what you wish for in this land of dreams come true Cause